With the abject misery and suffering that the massive coronavirus surge has brought on India has also come controversy over whether the Indian government contributed to the crisis, not just by playing down the risks before this second wave, but also through attempts at censorship in recent days, most obviously in getting Twitter to block many posts in India relating to the pandemic. Among those the Indian government got blocked were tweets by opposition politicians talking about Prime Minister Modi's mismanagement of the pandemic, or just highlighting the scale of the crisis and strain on the healthcare system. Even pictures posted by a photojournalist of the funeral pyres burning was blocked, as were tweets critical of large religious gatherings by the UK-based lawyer and academic Mirza Saeb Beg. It is surprising uh, that these tweets were removed, but it is not the first time that such, such action has been taken by the government. Uh, in the past also, we have seen how information that is critical of the government or that exposes actions of the government that are excessive in Kashmir or in other places and other issues that the Indian government is engaged in, uh, they have taken, the first step that they take is to cut off communications, to delete information. So critics say this is indicative of the way that India, which is now 142 out of 180 in the World Press Freedom Index, deals with criticism. Prime Minister Modi's 2014 communications director says it's not censorship. I think we need to differentiate between uh, the issue of censorship and the legitimate concerns of governments, uh, not only in India, but around the world. Uh, to the issue of fake news that is being uh, propagated. And but but, but so one, one, of the, one of the tweets that was removed was, was just a picture of funeral pyres burning. There may be some context behind this. Um, it, it's possible that um, there were concerns at a local level for uh, the law and order situation of that particular area or district. I think you are getting a true picture. The fact that um, the BBC is very, very actively reporting uh, all sorts of aspects uh, uh, of the pandemic in India almost on a rolling basis. Um, there will be concerns about whether it's fair or not, or whether it's balanced or not, but you get the same uh, arguments here in the UK and the same concerns in other parts. Do you have issues about, do you have issues with the, the reporting of India by the BBC? I, I do, actually, I do, and I, I, I often um, feel concerned that there isn't a, um, uh, there isn't a balanced uh, uh, narrative around uh, the reporting that it is, tends to be um, focused upon the negative. He did acknowledge it's been hard to put a positive spin on what's happening in the country today, but a highly defensive posture by the Indian government towards news seen as negative is something critics have become used to. Anytime people try to criticize the government, the assumption that is being used and it is being used as a weapon against them is that you are criticizing the nation. You are enemies of the nation if you criticize the government. And what needs to be understood is that governments will come and go, but the loss of lives, the, 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 the suffering that is going on right now, this is irreparable. The, the people who have lost their lives do not need to lose their lives. This is not something which cannot be addressed. It is the failure, it is the negligence of the government that is causing this to happen. And we have a right to criticize the government. Many Indian health experts have been saying the vastly underestimated official figures of infections and deaths are ongoing attempts to play down the scale of the crisis. But it is getting harder to control this tragic narrative. Ali McBall with that report. Well, earlier I asked Gopal Agarwal, the national spokesman for the BJP, the governing party, why the government had taken so long to admit to the crisis. No, no, uh, the government has not turned a blind eye. Uh, the first wave was very well controlled by the government, state center and other institutions like ICMR, medical pharma companies, medical fraternities, frontline workers. And uh, we were expecting second wave, but the, uh, the modeling, et cetera, or uh, the economist or the medical professional, nobody expected that the second wave will be so severe and it will be so widespread and so intense. 
You, you have uh, failed to implement a lockdown even now with well over 300,000 new cases a day. You've had a catastrophic shortage of oxygen, a black market for medicines, people dying on the streets outside hospitals, doctors describing how they're unable to cope, they don't have supplies and they don't have space, and you haven't even stocked electoral campaigning or religious gatherings that are bringing more people together. Uh, there is certain narration which is influencing the uh, which is being influenced by the social media and certain Western press also, Australia and other, uh, which are very hostile to Indian uh, dispensation. They are creating some this kind of narration. I would just like to put in fact, when the elections were declared in India, that time the uh, rate of uh, new COVID patient had fallen down to 11,000. And when you can stop those at any point. You can stop your electioneering at any point. That whilst countries like the UK and the US and many around the world have been scrabbling to help India in a time of crisis, your Prime Minister Modi was at a political rally. His Home Minister Amit Shah was alongside him on the streets at a political rally. Why weren't they focusing on the crisis and people dying at home? There are five state elections which were going on. The uh, four states' election were completed by 6th of April. By 6th of April, the number of cases was there only 13,000 per day. So that is not the situation. Later on, when suddenly there was a spurt from the second wave, uh, and the uh, Bharti Janta Party in itself had declared that we will not hold public rallies, and Prime Minister cancelled his rallies. And that point of time, after that, we have not been holding public rallies. And, and when people pointed out what was going wrong, when, for example, Molloy Gatak wrote, an MP wrote uh, on Twitter, India will never forgive the PM for underplaying the corona situation in the country and letting so many people die due to mismanagement, you shut down social media tweets like that. When you have a Reuters journalist, Danish Siddiqui, who said, never imagined I'd be a witness to these scenes in my hometown. Coronavirus continues to wreak havoc in New Delhi, India's national capital. You shut down those posts. You don't let people see them. Why are you spending your time shutting down social media posts instead of dealing with the crisis? Your information is completely incorrect. One thing I tell you, that. Uh, there were many instances of which have been pointed out by the government where same words, same sentences, and same uh, multiple sentences which were completely copied and being transmitted and tweeted from different handles which were originating not from our country but were originating from outside the Indian border. You're, you're a democracy. You're, you're the biggest democracy in the world. You can handle criticism, can't you? No, and no, no, this is not the right perspective that you are taking. Every country, uh, Twitter, etc., have to comply and all social platforms have to comply with the rules, of the rules and regulation of the content by the country. When our government pointed out that these uh, Twitter handles or these toolkit instrument which are not conducive to the current uh, national interest and which are completely uh, based on fake news and be, which are based in a, with an agenda those and which the uh, twitter and other social media agreed well it's an agenda Apparently mentioned it that we have received this uh, and uh, we have a independent judiciary if somebody right. has any objection to central oh, government or any government they can go to the court and that will see whether... Let me ask you something very simple. Is it unpatriotic to criticise the Indian government? For people in your country to criticise the Indian government and what Prime Minister Modi is doing, is it unpatriotic if they write these things on Twitter? And I'm quoting directly from the posts that have been taken down. If you uh, make a concerted effort and uh, take a fake news and false narration, and build that and create panic out of the crisis. Every government has the right to control the panic. Multiple people are dying. These are fake news and false news. You want right. to say that we should allow this? 
you okay. don't see any criticism of uh, Indian government and Modi government on in the social media. If you are completely blind to that, then right. I cannot help you. But uh, criticizing the state government, various institutions, okay. everything is open. Well, let's look at some of the criticism that has made it through then. One news predator we just spoke to uh, from the Caravan magazine has accused your government of trying to massage the figures of the death rate so the world didn't know how badly India was coping. We also know of a crematorium in Madhya Pradesh where 94 bodies were cremated in one day and government data reported just three. Uh, everything will be investigated if there are people, uh, the investigation authorities, their judiciary is scrutinizing. There are other FIRs being lodged. All these issues are taken care of. But this kind of narration building is not correct. Uh, if you can't find any uh, criticism of the government in Indian media, then I think you are completely keeping your eyes closed. I've just read you the criticism, but Gopal Agarwal, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, my pleasure. Well, joining us now is Shakuntala Banaji, Professor of Media, Culture and Social Change at LSE, and Rahil Khurshid, who was formerly Twitter's head of news, politics and government for Southeast Asia and was based in Delhi. Rahil, if I can start with you, you just heard uh, the BJP spokesman there telling me how they only took down stuff that they thought was or they deemed to be irresponsible or believed to be fake news or come with an agenda or from uh, foreign sources. Your response to that? That's absolutely incorrect. We've seen uh, the order on the Lumen database that's hosted by Harvard, uh, and most of the tweets, it's about 50 tweets there by uh, Indian lawmakers, filmmakers, journalists, and, and regular Twitter users. Uh, this assumption, this assertion that they came, they originated outside of India, were and and in and somehow were, you know, in contravention of Indian laws. Uh, is is absolutely and totally false. Uh, you know, it's it's very typically a problem of someone basically having a hammer and everything to that person looking like every problem to that person looking like a nail. Uh, the BJP has modified the BJP government has modified India's internet rules that gives uh, the authorities immense powers to basically send arbitrary orders to platforms like Twitter and others so they can ha have content that they simply do not like but taken it, down. Would you accept that in a pandemic, uh, the Indian government's particularly concerned with uh, panicking a population? So if people see shots of, of, of funeral piles or crematoriums that, that look overwhelming, then people get more panicked? Well, that's the thing. In a pandemic, the Indian government should be concerning itself with diffusing the situation rather than diffusing the news of the situation. If there are people lining up outside crematoriums waiting for their turns for over, you know, uh, 48 to 48 to 72 hours, uh, what you should be busy, busy figuring out is to how to diffuse that situation. What you should be busy figuring out is to how to get oxygen uh, to hospitals. Hospitals in De uh, Delhi have had to come to Twitter and tag the prime minister himself mm. for oxygen supply. Instead of addressing those things, his government is busy taking down tweets. Okay, let me bring in uh, Shakuntala Banaji because on the other side, we've also got a sense um, of what people are saying about distributing of misinformation on the part of the government. Just uh, Shakuntala, just talk us through what you're seeing there. So we've been studying um, networks of disinformation and misinformation in India for some years now, and we've been looking very closely at the link between the vilification of anyone who is a dissident against the government and of minorities such as Muslims and Christians, and the connection to this vast network of some paid and some unpaid supporters of the BJP and the Hindu far right. They have a network of WhatsApp groups, Twitter, Facebook groups, share chat groups, which actually operate as a sort of informal public sphere in conjunction with the mainstream media, a lot of which has also fallen foul of um, free speech and just swallowed hook, line and sinker, the line of the government about certain things. So, so let's just look at what happened um, briefly last year at the beginning of the first lockdown, when very, very quickly it became apparent that a group of people called the Tablighi Jamaat, a Muslim group, were being blamed 
quite unfairly, as it turned out through the courts, for spreading um, COVID uh, and since they had met before the lockdown was actually announced. And this went through thousands and thousands of WhatsApp groups in, in really monstrous language. And politicians were quoted calling for them to be boycotted from saying that Muslims were spreading COVID by mm. spitting on vegetables. It was, it was really a, a horrific scene out there. Meanwhile, of course, the lockdown was so badly managed that many people died of starvation and dehydration. But very little of that made it into public news. Uh, let me ask you, Rahil, because you're, you're from the Twitter family. Don't you feel that Twitter is part of the problem here, that it's complying with what it's being asked to do by the government in terms of shutting down criticism? Well, Twitter has to comply. They are incorporated in India as a legal entity. In February as well, uh, there was an order that was issued to Twitter for the takedown of about 500, 550 or 60 or tweets uh, for which there had been a total compliance, then that was rolled back into a partial compliance. I'm not sure if they're gonna be doing the same thing here. I hope they do. But the rules are laid out such that as Twitter, if you receive this order under India's IT rules, you have to comply within a certain time frame. Otherwise you risk uh, jail time or up to seven years for your staff. What Twitter can do is now go to a court uh, and challenge this order in the court mm. or uh, simultaneously roll back some of the some of the compliance. And Shakuntala, when you're talking about this sort of army of paid or unpaid, is that what we would think of as as basically bots? Um, you, you know, sort of, sort of basically uh, uh, automated responses. Is is that what you're seeing? No, actually. Uh, it's really interesting you should say that because there is absolutely evidence that there are bots and possibly around a third of the, the Twitter followers of many of the major politicians for the ruling party and even for some of the other parties happen to be bots or happen to be some kind of automated, um, some kind of automated um, machine. But actually what we're seeing is that the paid IT cells um, are tweeting out things, are going into WhatsApp groups, are members of hundreds of WhatsApp groups despite the best efforts of of platforms which have absolutely not been good enough. So I think it's a real moral failure and political failure on the part of platforms to say that they have not been able to control this because these people are very clearly doing exactly what the spokesperson you just um, talked to said. They're retweeting exactly the same things. They're putting exactly the same kinds of memes and gifts with hateful materials, with lying materials into these WhatsApp groups and they're poisoning the public sphere. They are also spreading medical misinformation around COVID and coronavirus. For instance, just to give you an example, we spoke last year, um, two years ago, we spoke with a man who said that he operated something like 200 um, WhatsApp groups. Uh, he was the administrator of 200 WhatsApp groups that he was um, he ran Twitter, yeah. lots and lots of Twitter handles, and that he said he was doing this 24-7, seven, seven days a week. He was Gosh. just literally doing this, and he said it in a we're, very matter-of-fact way. We're, we're out of time, but thank you both. Um, fascinating to, to hear from both of you.